On January 15th, 1919, the temperature in Boston rose rapidly from several frigid days to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The previous day, a ship had delivered a fresh load of molasses to a local um, refinery, which was warmed to reduce its viscosity for transfer. Possibly due to the thermal expansion of the older cold molasses inside, the tank burst open and collapsed at approximately 12.30 p.m. Witnesses reported that they felt the ground shake and heard a roar as it collapsed, a long rumble similar to the passing of an elevated train. Others reported a tremendous crashing, a deep growling, a thunderclap-like bang and a machine gun-like sound as the rivets shot out of the tank. Molasses density is about 1.4 tons per cubic meter, 40% more dense than water, so it had a great deal of potential energy. The collapse translated this energy into a wave of molasses 25 feet high at its peak, moving at 35 miles per hour. The wave was of sufficient force to drive steel panels of the burst tank against the girders of the adjacent Boston Elevated Railway's Atlantic Avenue structure, and tip a streetcar momentarily off the EL's tracks. Stephen Puello, or Puglio, Stephen Puglio describes how nearby buildings were swept off their foundations and crushed. Several blocks were flooded to a depth of two to three feet. Julio quotes a Boston Post report. Molasses, waist deep, covered the street and swirled and bubbled about the wreckage. Here and there struggled a form. Whether it was animal or human being was impossible to tell. Only an upheaval, a thrashing about in the sticky mass, showed where any life was. Horses died like so many flies on, on sticky flypaper. The more they struggled the deeper in the mess they were ensnared. The Boston Globe reported that people were picked up by a rush of hair, air and hurled many feet. Others had debris hurled at them from a rush of sweet-smelling air. A truck was picked up and hurled into the Boston Harbor. After the initial wave, the molasses became viscous, exacerbated by the cold temperatures, trapping those caught in the wave and making it even more difficult to rescue them. About 150 people were injured, and 21 people and several horses were killed. Some were crushed and drowned by the molasses or the debris it carried within. The wounded inclu included horses, people, horses, and dogs. Coughing fits became one of the most common ailments after the initial blast. Edwards Park wrote of one child's experiment, experience in a 1983 article for Smithsonian. Antony Distasio walked homeward with his sisters from the Michelangelo school, was picked up by the wave and carried, tumbling on its crest, almost as though he were surfing. Then he grounded by the, then he was grounded by the molasses. What? <laughs> Okay, there's there's a grammatical error on Wikipedia here. And the molasses rolled him like a pebble as the wave diminished. He heard his mother call his name and couldn't answer. His throat was so clogged with, with the smothering goo. He passed out, then opened his eyes to find three of his four sisters staring at him. Welcome to the Indie Heads Podcast Retrospect on the album Kaput by Destroyer. Hello. I'm, I'm Jeremiah. And I am Alex. And um, 
what you just heard is a first-hand account of what it feels like to listen to the album Kaput by a Destroyer. Yes. Yeah, the, the boy at the end of that segment from the Wikipedia article on the 1919 Great Molasses Flood of Boston was actually our, our Jeremiah mm-hmm. speaking to you through this podcast today. Yes. Yep. Um, locals also call it the Boston Molassacre. Um, <laughs> this is true. Uh, and legend has it that you can still smell molasses on a hot day in Boston. <clears throat> even all these years later. 101 years ago. Yep. What a concept. Apparently the harbor was brown with molasses until the summer. Mm-hmm. They had to use sand and water to clean it up and just put it in the bay, basically. So when I read about this the first time, which I think was on its um, 100th anniversary on Wikipedia, it must have been like featured up there, um, that the, the paragraph, the, the guy who wrote for the Boston Post talking about um, horses died like so many flies on sticky fly paper, just like, damn. Yeah, that that, that paragraph is just poetry, yeah. and also is just horrific. Um, it it sounds like such a, a comical thing. Yeah, you know, and like, like twenty one like, oh, people died. <laughs> flooded with Boston, and then you read the the accounts and and you read all that stuff, and it's just genuinely like a a horrific thing. Yeah, and it's just yeah, I'm. <laughs> It's one of those things where you're extremely glad it happened, and also you really wish it didn't happen, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're like, for the concept, yeah, I'm it, glad if, it happened. If only no one died. If excellent. only it was like, like a piece of lore <laughs> in, in some game. <laughs> but you know, part the... of, but people dying part, partly makes it more mythical, you know? It's, it's Death true. is such a weird way of connecting to how we live. Because obviously yeah. we live to die, um, and it's just—I don't know—it's it wouldn't have the same gravity that it does. It, Fair it, enough. It's it, it's this. Oh, this is a pun. <laughs> it's bittersweet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like it's I feel this... like molasses just sounds so harmless and I know. you're like molasses flood that's funny <laughs> I bet people like had trouble trudging around in that and then you're like <laughs> people were buried in molasses and, then and suffocated, suffocated in it people died instantly rashing about in other people mass. like and then other people suffered for for hours probably <sighs> Yeah, yeah, so the album could put pretty fucked up. <laughs> Destroyer. Um, um Alex, yeah. let's play it. That's let's what Bay of Pigs is about, actually. Yeah, I, that's true. That's the titular bay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alex, we're going to play a thought exercise. I want you to okay. hold a gun up to my head. Okay. Is it I cocked? I'm holding a gun to your head. Is it ready to go? Finger on the trigger. Uh, Safety yes. off. All right. Yes. Ask me what my favorite album of all time is. What is your favorite and album if, of all time? And if I don't tell you honestly, you'll shoot me. This okay. podcast will end on the spot. Okay. All right. All right, go ahead and ask. What is your favorite album of all time? It is Kaput by Destroyer. That oh. is my, yeah, that is my, <laughs> Kaput is my gun to my head album. Um, obviously, I would prefer it if when they have a gun up to my head, they give me more than one album to name. But I think genuinely, if someone held a gun up to my head and they could sense my thoughts and they could sense my emotions they could sense my feelings they would know if i said any other album they would know that there was a, sh- a shred of doubt in there but with kaput it's just not the case um, i'd probably just fucking die dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, that means this podcast ended because Alex is dead. Um, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> this is such a... I was like... Okay, so we've been talking about having this podcast for a while because it's been planned. Because um, it's one of our yep. top ten. Yep. Um, Should have been number zero, if you ask me. But um, 
uh, right. So, so Alex, initially you were like, I don't know how I'm going to talk about this. And I was like, come on, man. It's just kaput. <laughs> and then I was reading through our, our year end list. And then I came to my kaput right up. <laughs> and literally, I had so much trouble writing about it that I used a picture of Ram in a thicket, which is, yep. you know, foundational 2500 BC Sumerian piece of art. Um, I had to use that. And I also had to use the three stanzas from um, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner that I so often quote. In order yeah. <laughs> to have any hope, and then I couldn't even. I mean that, and then I had to go deeper and had to like just make up some weird shit. Let me go see what I said. This it was just out of control. See, the thing about uh, uh, kaput is that it's like that wave of molasses. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's sticky, and when you're it's in it, you're really in it, smothering. and it's horrifying and real and true and true. But uh, it's it's truly hard to grasp when you are not in it. No. Yes. And when you are in it, you find yourself writhing and uh, getting caught deeper into it. Dan Behar has a quote about it being his uh, his most famous, most popular album. And, and he's just like, I don't know, he's like, yeah, I'm barely there. And, and that's why people like it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, my voice is so dead on the album. And that's why people like it more. <laughs> I, um, he said that he that a lot of the songs gestated as um, lullabies. He sang to his child, who I think was born in like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. So huh. while she was, I did in not know the that. Crib. Wait, hold on. No fucking way. Oh no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Who I just had a moment. Kaput came out on January twenty fifth. Um, the Great Molasses Flood happened on January fifteenth. Okay. Um, that I was, would have been insane. I was like, I, I, <laughs> woo-hoo! Um, I'm, you I'm almost, sure. You almost I'm manifested sure, it. You almost manifested almost it. Almost made sure. it happen. <laughs> I'm sure that when Kaput was, was released, everyone in Boston felt a great disturbance yes, and a sweet did. smell on the air. <laughs> so, um. Oh, hi. Hi, it's Maddie. I won't be speaking through through most of this podcast. I'm letting Alex and Jeremiah uh, have their deranged episode, and then I will only come in to save it if 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 absolutely necessary. If things go off the rails, it's, like it's the, important to have like an that audience. one train car that got knocked off the rails by the Great Molasses Flood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't get an update really, on like, that. We didn't get an update you, on that. What happened? You describe to the train it. Car? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Should I? I. Well, it probably shouldn't scour right now. Yeah, we'll figure it out later. Yeah. Yeah. We'll 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 make a, a post about it on mm-hmm. our medium. <laughs> we'll we'll do it in post. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. How do these usually work? You like talk about the album and not about floods of molasses or something? <laughs> I mean, I think the we've been kind of going through i think just it's a bit easier is kind of going track by track, track and by then, track okay and then kind of figure, and then just sort of what musings we we develop from there mm-hmm. uh, okay well the first the first track of the album is really famous song um it's tangled up in blue um <laughs> 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 fucking great song <laughs> yeah tangled up in blue is very good i literally i, I a very said, tender I said, song i i said it was okay if you guys did a bob dylan segue i said it's fine at some point but please give some time to kaput first this is a very important album yes this is literally um, the gun this is the gun to your head album <laughs> gun, to head <laughs> gun to my head I'm gonna talk about blood on the tracks <laughs> instead. <laughs> I bet I bet Dan likes Idiot Wind, right? Oh yeah, I bet. I think. Yeah. I mean, he, I know he really loves um, Bob Dylan. He and um, around when Ken came out, um, he was interviewed by oh god, what the fuck, uh, Steve Hyden for Celebration Rock podcast. And they ended up talking okay. for like 20 minutes about Dylan's gospel period, which they oh both God. thought was really underrated. <laughs> <laughs> which That's is uh... powerful energy. 
Yeah, I feel like I feel like getting into Dylan's gospel period is the just like the the final destination of any yeah. Bob fan. <laughs> That's how you know. But you you have to get really deep to get that far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Kaput right. is a... It's a beast. Yeah, Kaput's a beast. It's a very mysterious album. Earlier today, I compared it to an alien monolith, and I mm. think that's that's very apt. Yeah, that's pretty apt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... I know it does... It's... Not a... It's the only album, I think, that I would truly, genuinely describe as being magical. It... Okay. exists in this plane, which is just infinitely spacious and, you know, infinitely small um and it just shimmers and it really does feel like i don't know you you stumbled into this realm yeah there's there's a deep mystique you're it you're in like this this maze of of fantasy sleazy back where it's always always twilight (laughs) um have you have you ever seen the music video for the title track i have I remember it's... him picking bananas. <laughs> it is truly undescribable. No, I don't. I don't I think, think that a banana. Happens. Unless I'm thinking of another it's press one, photo. With it's him. the one with the like, kind of like coked up kid. Oh yeah, and, and, and all the weird they, model. And there's dancers and, too, right? Yeah, and and there's dancers, and eventually there's this bizarre like, like desert scene, and and there's a flying whale, and. Um, <sighs> Yeah, That's I showed this be. in a, in the middle of a, a photo presentation in class. <laughs> <laughs> it was really long, and I had an intermission where I just played the music video. <laughs> 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 okay, so I guess we should try to do as Maddie suggests. Um, yes. So we start with Chinatown. Sure. Um, Chinatown, good song, has a heart on my iTunes. Uh, moving on, Blue Eyes, it's wrong, has a heart on my iTunes. <laughs> Savage Night at the Opera, good song, has a heart on my iTunes. Suicide Demo for Carol Walker, good song, has four on my iTunes. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> and we've just been taken down. <laughs> oh no! It's the copyright police! <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so on if, and so if forth. Somehow, by the by, the end of this podcast, we've all like doomed every single member of the Indie Hits podcast to life in prison. That's think, like the yeah. I think we've, we've done our job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were summoned to do something profane and unspeakable, <laughs> which is talk about kaput. And so we the goal must, we uh, can't achieve because yeah, we can't and so talk we must bring it. everyone else down with us. <laughs> yeah. Alex, get the gun. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> We're pulling it on Maddie this time. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. You can't put the gun on me. You need, you need me. You need me. Mm. <laughs> All right. I'm still, Maddie will be still loud. Needed, you know, I'm Maddie, still needed for part okay. of the podcast. Maddie, we'll give you, you need, a gun. And, 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 and you need mm-hmm. somebody to record the infamous Diverse Cast. Volume 2, yeah. Volume 2. Yeah. Bootleg edition. Which okay, will be Maddie. the last episode of our decade retrospective. That that will that will be the that is the last one for this the series team. of retrospects. The Part, big, partly big by team. necessity because I am still in school and I cannot do it until I am done. Um, yes. Maddie, here's what we'll do. We'll give you a gun with exactly one bullet in it, and you'll know <laughs> you'll know what to do with the bullet when the time comes. <laughs> My my bullet is, is the mute button that I have over both of you. <laughs> I, I will I will use on one of you when it when it comes time. Wow. Oh, in the mute time, the bite marks on my arm. I was just biting myself, guys. I'm not infected. I swear. <laughs> mm, yummy, my hand. It's so good. I'm not infected. Not a zombie. No need to shoot me. Um, nope. Let's see. <sighs> So Kaput. All right. Good album. Kaput. Ancient Monolith. Ancient Monolith discovered in the belly of some beast many thousands of years ago. <laughs> um, 
It was actually okay, found, I... actually, Kaput was found um, when they were excavating, I believe it was in Syria. Um, they were excavating an ancient Sumerian city, um, and they found it and its companion, also Kaput, um, crushed under lots and lots of dirt. But they were able to pull it out, and they were able to um, repair the wood inside it, and miraculously the outside was, was held up. Um, and they were able to, to, to piece it back together. Um, he's, he's and now Kaput is on display in um, the art museum in Philadelphia. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to see it when we were there, Alex. Um, and also in the Royal Museum of London, which I also didn't see while I was there, even though I did have many experiences with Kaput while I was in London um, all those years ago. Um, also, Samuel Coleridge, um, he had a deep experience with Kaput while he was blast off his mind on opium. Um, and here's what he had to say about it. Um, this is from, from the poet's mouth. Day after day, day after day we stuck, nor breath, nor motion, as idle as a painted <laughs> ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. The very deep did rot, oh Christ, that ever this should be. Yea, slimy things did crawl with legs upon the slimy sea. The slimy molasses. The slimy molasses sea, boys. All right. Um, gun to your head. Gun to my head. Gun is gun at to my your head. head. Yep. Gun is at your head. Gun is at my head. About to pull the trigger. Yep. What's What's your favorite song from Kaput? Blue Eyes. Okay, yeah. why? Um, well, I mean, that's the verse. <laughs> um, oh, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm, how does it start? Wait. You terrify the land, you are pestle and mortar, your first love's new order. Mother Nature's son, king of the Everglades, population one. I write poetry for myself, I write poetry for myself. Baby. <laughs> Got those blue eyes. I wrote that Jeremiah was going to have like a David Lynch moment where he says that Eraserhead is his most spiritual film, and then when asked to elaborate, he says no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's, I mean, that's what this is. That's how I answered. Right? That's, that's what this is. <laughs> um, and that's really this yeah. entire podcast is that like we're gonna be, you know we're gonna I'm, I'm gonna attempt to try to pr- you know prod yeah. out answers on you guys. We, about why we you love warned Detroit, you that this would be why difficult. you love this. Why you love this album? What exactly Raymond I think it actually is, mm-hmm. and what it means in the context it could put, and what I will think, be told no. So what we're doing here, and this is actually what part of what makes Caput 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 so beautiful is, um, Caput captures the unimaginable, and we are trying to replicate that by capturing how Caput captures the unimaginable, um, and that is infinitely impossible this is a task that philosophers have spent the three millennium of western philosophy <laughs> pondering is how to approach kaput um and it's i mean it's it's i mean it's just it's I, I, what are the, the other word to describe it there's two words magical and enigmatic absolutely yeah it, yeah it, kaput it, doesn't want us to understand and it. i think and i'm okay with that yeah um it is so trans. It is so transportive to this to this world which Dan Behar discovered, um, and I think it's the line in the line in the title track that really gets me, which is um, "wasting your days chasing some girls or chasing cocaine through the back rooms of the world all night." And I just it's just this constant motion, just constant nighttime. Where I mean, I just imagine like. You start in Shanghai, and then you just keep going. You keep cha- you keep running away from the sun. Um, an, an infinite maze of sleazy infinite back ra- maze ways. of cocaine filled hazy back rooms. Um, and it's just it's it's I don't it's it's just it's very ugh, you know like <laughs> I, don't get, I don't get tangled up. But you know what? Actually, I had a while I was walking my dog today. Um, I, it occurred to me, speaking of Bob Dylan, this actually does not have to do with Blood on the Tracks at all. Um, and I was like, how does one describe this album? And I was like, well, you know, Idiot Wind is the greatest song of all time. But that's not the point. This is true. Um, and I was like, you know, in Stuck Inside of Mobile, when Bob says, um, when, the, 
what's his name? The the guy, the railroad guy. No, the doctor. Somebody gives him Texas medicine and railroad gin. And like a fool, he mixed them. And that strangled up his mind. And now people just get, keep getting uglier. And he has no sense of time. Uh, I think that is also just what... I don't know what it feels like to listen to Kaput. Okay, actually, this is totally... And this is related. Because all, everything I'm going to say is related. Um, because Kaput is so... Every word I say is pretty much, like, just cribbed straight from Kaput. Like, <laughs> nothing I said has ever been genuinely my thought. Um, eggs? So, okay. When you heat something, it melts. Right? Right? That's how this works. It, sure. Like, let's say you, you put a thing of cheese in the, in the microwave, it's going to melt. Eggs? Yeah. So you're like, okay, but why do eggs harden when they are cooked? Shouldn't the proteins eggs... get destroyed. Um, and, well, yes, but also the proteins get tangled up. They okay. heat and they start going really fast. I Googled this one time because I was really curious. They start going really fast and they get twisted on each other. And that's why, like, eggs harden when, they, when they're cooked. And I don't know, that just feels like, I mean, just put me on the stove, kaputs the burner, get me twisted up. <laughs> Just nothing I can do. Fuck, man. Now I'm thinking right. of foot. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what we're trying to do here. Wait, <laughs> wait, I thought we were talking about blood on the tracks here. <laughs> I'm really going to have to guide this thing. I'm really. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're on top of it. We're doing good. Okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna pull up your write up, Jeremiah of Kaput, which, by the way, behind the scenes of of the of our, oh uh, yeah, that was a album, album of the decade. Uh, that was a real uh, gun to my head album. moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I, I was violently putting the bun, gun to your head repeatedly yeah, on many, many. Just kill him already, Maddie. But Maddie, you saw something in me. You saw something in me. You said, "No, I know he has potential. I know he can do it." And they were like, "Damn it, Maddie, just pull the trigger." But you said no. And so I created something bizarre and it's actually quite good. It's a, it's a good piece of writing, I think. Okay, I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions okay. based on what you've yeah. written. Uh is Dan Behar the only person you can trust still? Um, I think so, yes. Especially yes. Yep, I agree with that. Um I okay. do make that point multiple times. Um <laughs> throughout Yes, yes. Dan Behar is the only person I can trust. Okay, uh, real quick. Uh, so uh, it occupies a coveted spot in a holy trinity that is apparently known only to me, mm -hmm. but I think known in most hearts. Yes. You want to know what uh, the trinity is? I Can I guess the trinity? Yes, you can guess what the trinity is. Okay, obviously Kaput. Yep. Divers. Yep. Psychopomp. Yep, that's the trinity. Yep. yep. Okay. yep you got it. Uh, I know him so well. I, I haven't determined <laughs> which one is the creator, which one is the son, and which one is the holy ghost yet. <laughs> um, each one has filled that niche. Well, I guess no, except except Psychopomp. Psychopomp is either the Sun or the Holy Ghost. Um, and you're like, it's just it's that's just we're not gonna go there. Um, I but think yeah, that I is think the Trinity. Divers the Creator, Psychopomp the thinking. Sun, Kaput the Holy Ghost. Oh, you know, yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, that's probably how it has to be because Kaput is so ethereal. Yeah. Um, and you could argue that the Holy Ghost is the protagonist among the Trinity in the Bible. Um, that's just a personal. <laughs> that's that's headcanon, though. Um, the Holy Ghost is pretty fucking awesome. Like, God kills a lot of people in the Old Testament. Um, I mean, Jesus is woke. But, like, the Holy Spirit is just chilling. Anyways, moving on. Moving on. Come, Maddie, what else come to got? the Indie I'm Heads gonna, podcast gonna... for all your Bible headcanon folks. Mm -hmm. I, well, Jeremiah, next time that I watch Jeopardy with Elizabeth, I will need you because you know more about the Bible than we do. Yes, because <laughs> they they talk they, they be talking old, uh... about the Bible a lot on Jeopardy. Yes, they do. Yeah, no, the Bible's fascinating. Do you guys want me to uh, to recite a Bible verse on the spot? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Which would you like, Amos eight or Leviticus ten? Let's go Leviticus. All right. I feel like that Leviticus seems. All right. Uh, this is right the sin of like. Nadab and Abihu. It is Leviticus ten one through three. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, each took his fire pan, uh, put live coals in it, and presented it before the Lord. However, this fire was not holy as the Lord God had not commanded them to present it. 
And the Lord God sent fire and burned them there in the presence of the Lord. And then the rest of the chapter, so they died. That's, they burned. The rest of the chapter is literally Moses going to Aaron, being like, hey, your son's fucked up. And now you're unclean, and now you have to clean yourself. And that's Leviticus 10. Well, that, that, I think that ties into my, my next question. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my next, I guess I continue through your write-up. Despairing is the natural condition that Kaput finds the listener in. Despairing yes. is a condition that encompasses all of their natural conditions. Yes. This is known to many, but open to few. Kaput opens it and places it on a shelf and revels in it. Despair in all its wonder parades itself for us, and we laugh and revel and rejoice and weep and find heart. For this is a natural condition that we find ourselves in. Mm-hmm. In absences, we find our we find the inverse, and Kaput is right with the inverse. Rested from dusty harbors, we find ethereal sacks and imperiled empiled stasis of chasing some girls and or cocaine through the back rooms all night. Despair drives plate tectonics. Mm-hmm. Plate tectonics drive extinction events. This is known to us through critical analysis of the Permian extinction, the Great Dying. Despair is the only thing that is known to us and is the natural condition of things. Kaput recognizes this and despairs and revels. Um what did you mean by all that? So, okay. <laughs> Great question. Um, despair is the natu- is the is our natural state, is our natural condition. I think you can when I say despair, I mean it's it is the natural state of humans. Um, I think it's also the natural state of the world. It's the natural state of anything that changes. Um, because at least my definition of despair in this instance is longing for something and also the absence of something else it's this movement forward to something this to to grab and leaving something else behind or having something else left from you i think we are always in this state um i think much of the universe is um and it's just it's this i mean it's it's the it's this void you know and it's this void that is trying, constantly trying to chase outward. We're trying to, constantly trying to expand outward, both past, present, future, whatever. Um, and I think more so than most pieces of art, I think Kaput recognizes this and taps into it. And where many might look into something and despair, might look into the heart of despair and despair, um, I think Kaput, for me, sees the beauty of it. And just kind of, I don't, it's just, and it just, it exalts it, you know? And it, it's really, truly beautiful. I think that's part of what makes Kaput so unknowable is because this void, this despair is so unknowable. And somehow Kaput finds a way to know it. And so I am utterly unable to describe despair. Justin and I is utterly incapable of describing Kaput. Um, also, it was like 3 a.m. when I wrote that. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> Mm. Um, I was not able to tell. I was not able to tell. Yeah, no way. Couldn't figure that one out. Um, but was it 3 a.m. the next day, or is it 3 a.m. the... Wait. Never mind. That doesn't work. I was going to say, like, okay. was I up two nights? Is it the second <laughs> night's 3 a.m.? No, but it doesn't really quite okay. work that way. Okay, to, to, to move back a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, and, and for something for, for the both of you, because... Obviously, Jeremiah wrote the 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 the, the blurb for Kaput, but uh, you obviously have a lot of thoughts, Alex. Mm. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pose this question okay. to you too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we just I'm not I feel like I think we might discuss this before we start recording, but just very quickly, uh, how did you both discover Destroyer and then this album, or both? Because it seems like this is a lot of people's this was a lot of people's first Destroyer album. Yeah, I it was just through Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah aggressed it into my brain, and uh, as as I am ought and I to I do. got I got into this album when I was a freshman in college, but I feel like I didn't like really get into Destroyer um like until a a couple years later when Jeremiah came up to visit me. And we went to a record store, and he forced me to buy the album City of Daughters. <laughs> as well as, as, well Street, as Hawk. Street Hawk. But I still don't know if you... But you were... But I, you I like Street Hawk. I haven't, I haven't fallen in love with it yet. Um, yes. Because you spent so much time with City yeah. of Daughters. <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite Destroyer <laughs> album is probably City of Daughters or Ken. 
personally, but Kaput Kaput mm-hmm. is obviously the God. Ken is just one of the best albums of all time. Ken Ken does slap. At first, you're like, this is just a victory lap. The first time you hear Ken, you're like, this is a victory lap. This is an old guard, old head, just putting out the good stuff. And then it was like, now hold on, <laughs> just one minute. Um, so I knew of Destroyer. I think I def I didn't. So I knew about Destroyer because of like I don't know, probably like Rolling Stone or something. Um, but so. Dan Behar, when he named the band Destroyer, he wanted it to be a joke because, you know, you hear Destroyer and you think big death metal band um, or what have you. And obviously it's not that at all. It is a um, very eloquent and esoteric singer songwriter. Um, this same thing also happened with My Bloody Valentine. I had known about Loveless for years, but I thought it was Bullet for My Valentine. I thought My Bloody Valentine and Bullet for My Valentine were the same. <laughs> So it took me a very long time. It wasn't until I learned the difference. Might have been like 2015 or something. I think it was one of you guys told me. Loveless I was like, wait. Loveless freaking slaps. I am a... Loveless does Loveless slap. Is very good. Um, but so I like, for a long time, I assumed that Destroyer was that. I think um, it started, I started to see it as I was researching, as I kind of became more musically aware um, and really started to dig into things in like 2014, 2015, I started to you know see it more and more. Um, and I think I kept putting it off buying it and i finally got it on cd um in like early 2015 and then i was like holy shit what the fuck because <laughs> it was just just I, I mean it's just obviously not what i expected in the slightest and then i just after that i was just gone down the destroyer hole um i listened to it a lot for me it's always going to have associations with airports because i think it's a great airport album um, it's, I mean, the transitory nature of airports and just, it's just, I mean, it's, and then can, all the white, yeah, everything is totally white Yeah, I totally see that. That makes sense. Um, and there's so much open space and it's very, it's the perfect place to listen to it. And then also in London where, um, where we were going, um, and, uh, I just, and like in this tiny little cramped hotel room, um, listening to it while my brother was out partying because one of his friends was like, there as well coincidentally for something and so he was like fuck it yeah and so he'd stay up until like five and i would also stay up till five but i was doing very different things i was listening to kaput and also the either wheel um at this like while playing uh this was the first week you know what it was okay so in wow in warlords of draenor which is the worst expansion worst wow expansion like even bfa is not as bad as that one because there was nothing to do um, at some point late into its life cycle, they added these weekly events, which did stuff. And at some point, WoW added this Pokemon battle system where you get pets. You've always been able to collect these little pets, but you can make them fight. And it sounds dumb and derivative and like, why don't you just go play Pokemon? But it fucking rocks. I love that shit. And that first week was the first ever battle pet bonus week. And so your battle pets leveled up super fast. And so I would stay up to like 5 a.m. every every day. Listening to Destroyer, listening to Fiona Apple, just grinding out my battle pets. Um, so yeah, that's that was. Uh, yep, that's my story. Okay, King. All right. <laughs> the, the origins of, of kaput of, of listening, but I guess now I bring to the question of mm-hmm. sort of. Um, why has Kaput endured for you over the years beyond uh, it, it beyond the the despair stuff mm-hmm. and things of that nature? Why, why why do you think that this album not only has resonated for you mm-hmm. and for for you both, but also it seems like in in the cultural uh, lexicon of, of 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 music fans, where this album pretty consistently was always pretty close to the top for yeah. a lot of these album of the year lists. Um, always a solid top 20 pick i think compared to other stuff where even like the number one would always kind of be except for like your your really big heavy hitters you know a lot of people's top 10s and 15s were like messes and at times yeah. uh, completely terrible and yeah Kaput, what is wrong Kaput with was people. always on there but Kaput was always near that was always always a very solid top tier yeah. pick yeah so why why do you think this album what compared to like uh like poison season and ken and just anything uh, any any destroyer album before this one why has this been like the destroyer i think it, I think it Alex, comes I down to two things really um 
Number one is it slaps. <laughs> uh, the the songs yes. on here are really mm-hmm. well crafted and they're they're like memorable, but but they're the they're also reviews. subtle and and so you know it, your your understanding of them builds as time elapses. Um, and and number two is is kind of what Jeremiah was getting into earlier, which is is that it it is so unknowable and and your relationship to this album changes so easily, at least for me. Like there are periods of time where I feel like I know what Kaput is about. I understand it in this moment. I relate to it, and then like a few months later, I'm I'm just as lost as I was when I began. You know, um. So it's it's always interesting to listen to. And again, it's just the songs. They're good. They're they're easy to listen to. They're enjoyable. Um. And and they're they're they just have great replay value. Yeah, I mean, every, it's just every song on here is fantastic. Um, it's the, one of the best produced albums I've ever heard. Uh, it's just every song just sounds fucking gorgeous. There's so much depth to the compositions. Even um, just I, you know, the backups I, I like even just on a on a like the sounds that are happening level. I feel like I understand Chinatown a little bit more now than I did even a few months ago. Like I noticed new things earlier today listening mm-hmm. to it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, the other thing about this album is that it is, I mean, it captures this platonic ideal of the 80s sound that I have since been trying to chase. (laughs) As you guys may know, um, you being Alex and Maddie, I love the 80s very much. We've seen this. Um, Especially British pop, um, especially the band Prefab Sprout. who I think he cited as an inspiration for this album. Um, but, I mean, but they're just, I mean, still, the, the closest album to this, I think, is um, Avalon by Roxy Music. But even then, I mean, this album just takes it just somewhere. It's just this, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's like, you, you hear this, you're like, okay, this is 80s. But also, it's like the best 80s album I've ever heard. This is the best album of the 80s. Like, <laughs> Hello. It, I mean, it just feels like this weird time capsule, but you know it could have come from you know 1940. Um, oh, it's just. I mean, the songs are just fucking awesome. They're just great songs. Like Savage Night at the Opera just fucking goes. That guitar solo, come on, what the fuck? Like, oh, it's. I just, and the lyrics yeah. are great. Like everybody. You can always just throw out a lyric out of nowhere, like uh, "Don't be ashamed or disgusted with yourselves," from Blue Eyes. Just fucking what, beautiful line. Yeah, it's simple, but it's just so it's just so gorgeous. Another thing is, I I um, think it's this... also really easy to be drawn. At. Sorry, I kind of interrupted you. Finish yes. your thought. No, 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 no. I'm glad you. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was. Okay. Off. It's it's really easy to be drawn in by like the the mystique of the sound of the record, mm-hmm. like. I don't know. The, this whole album is just steeped in fog, and and it's yeah, it just yeah. Good. It's just it's just something you, so someone you will listen to like, it. Cozy you'll listen through. to it. You'll be like, this sounds good. This is interesting. And then, as you, one of my favorite things actually about getting to know this record was not knowing the lyrics. Um, I mean, now like obviously I've listened to it so many times that I I think I think there's still some lines in Bay of Pigs that I always forget about because um, it's so long, but. You know, even knowing the lyrics like the back of my hand before that, um, I mean, it was just it was so exciting to listen to this album and not be able to sing along to like, you know, I could I could do one or two lines. Like I learned the blue, the blue eyes um, first verse really early on. But every time I listened to it, I would just get just a new line would sneak up on me. And it was because you, you never know what turn he's going to take. He is so just just zigzagging all over the place on on threads that only he can see. Um, and it was just like, it was just every time I listened to the album, it was revelatory. And so beyond, I mean, I would listen to this album instrumentally. I would listen to an instrumental version of this album, no doubt, right? And then you add one of the greatest songwriters of all time, which Dan Behar is, um, at his best, which this is his best. Um, and it's, it's just, I, I mean, it's, it's, I, it's, it's captivating. Like, you people who don't appreciate lyrics can appreciate this album um and and his voice is forward 
so you can, like, know what he's saying. Um, he's very chill, so you're not intimidated by him. <laughs> <laughs> Which can be the case with some lyrically phenomenal albums. Um, it's just, I mean, it's, it's delicate. It's just this light, delicate touch. And it's, it's just so inviting. Um, and so welcoming. I think, I think delicate is, is a really good word for it. It's, yeah. it's gentle. It's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it is. It is like a warm blanket. Um, I mean, it's just such a cozy album. I, I, I mean, oh, it's just one, oh, it's just the fucking best, dude. I love the album cover. I've been looking at the album cover for the past, like, 15 minutes. What a strange and delightful album cover. The colors are... The color gradient is fucking perfect. It goes from dark gray to the benches, and then the people all in white, and then the darker gray of the forest, and the slightly lighter gray of Vancouver, and then the mountains, and the sky, and you're just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful. It's just, it's just, it's just so unknowable. Yeah. And I mean, that's and that's like, and, it, and so obviously you guys know that I've been obsessed with Ram in a Thicket since I discovered it, um, and that was the reason why I went to put Ram in a Thicket in the review. Is I just think Ram in a Thicket is also just unknowable, and it's but it's like especially unknowable because we have no idea who the fuck made it. Um, we know how old it is. We know where it was found. We know what it was probably like. It was a diptych. We know that. Interesting. Um, but, I mean, it's just, it's so, it is unknowable. And I think Kaput has the same energy. And also, um, Ram in a Thicket, I mean, it's, the name comes from the Bible. Um, the, the archaeologist who found it was struck by the fact that the ram was kind of like standing in a bush. And it reminded him of the Binding of Isaac when um, God's like, hey, wait, no, don't kill your son. Here. And then there's this ram that's caught in a thicket, and um, Abraham sacrifices that instead. Um, which and I think this idea of stasis and being caught, which is also why I love that the, those three stanzas from Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Um, I think that is that's very true to my condition, to my personal human condition, um, and I think it's also true to just the despair where you know we're trying to to get a, we're just kind of stuck and i think this album has a lot of those moments like um uh in savage night at the opera where it's like you'll never guess just where i've been a life abandoned midstream um like just i i it's just oh it's beautiful and it's yeah it's there's it's just unknowable and and it, it's it's yeah it's just fucking perfect um, I, I have a, uh, you mentioned something very early on the podcast that I think I'm, I'm very intrigued by, because it definitely from going, but by the way, I didn't get to tell the story. Uh, I am not the only victim of Jeremiah's bullying when it comes to buying <laughs> records. There was, uh, we were at the record fair at the Pitchfork Music Festival in 2017, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, I think, uh, City of Daughters, oh. uh, had oh, the red. Made, yeah, they got the yeah. reissue. I want that record. I and have to see. I was like, uh, should I get this? And then Jeremiah was like, you need to get this. And so I got it. Uh, but my question is that mm -hmm. it definitely seems like this record was a, a big sea change for yes. Dan, where I think you mentioned that vocally, um, what, what did you say vocally? Where it, Not to say he didn't like give up vocally, but he, there's definitely like... He was laying down, I've heard. He, I've heard he actually recorded a lot of the songs like laying down. Which I think is just the perfect, I mean, like, visually, that's, like, that's the difference, right? Instead of him being mm -hmm. up there singing into a microphone, he is literally lying down. Um, and it's just this, this lounge singer suave feel. It's just, it feels like he's relaxing, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it feels like he's being delicate, which is not the case on all of the albums before this. Uh, Chilling like, with there's, Mayhar. There's, like, a certain, the there's, a, there's a certain theatricality to, to his... Uh, like early music yeah, that, that's not exactly missing on here but it's you know yeah like like ruby's when he's like uh um, swirling cyclones jackknives they got eyes for your wife <laughs> and you're like ah <laughs> <laughs> um and this, and this there's nothing like that that was just a, a really yeah, good no, caricature it, of, of earlier Bay thank you <laughs> um hey it's i mean yeah you can tell he's 
relaxing. And he's letting he's letting go almost. Um and there's a lot of nervous energy on early destroyer records and I just think that there's really it's just so, there's just so much self assured yeah. confidence. But all, but it's it's not even necessarily like confidence. It's not it's arrogance like, at all. Also, like, it's like you are okay. Yeah. So there's this okay. So in the first episode of Mad Men, um, there's, there's a watched, piece to it. And yes, there's there he has this little when you know, Netflix sometimes I don't know if what what tele, what technology you watch Netflix on, but sometimes it auto plays little clips from things, usually like a trailer or something when yeah, you cast over I, something. I, For Mad Men, it plays this one clip. From the beginning, from the first episode, where Don Draper is like, um, advertising is based on one thing, happiness. Um, and what is happiness? It's the spell of a new car. It's the sign on the billboard on the side of the road that like screams with reassurance that what you're doing, it's okay. And then Don kind of looks down and like starts talking to himself. And he's like, you are okay. You know, because obviously he's talking to himself when he says you are okay. Um and it just it just feels like that that recognition of you are okay. It's not necessarily like I'm the king of the world, I'm confident. It's like you yeah. are okay. And so you can make what you want. You can do what you want. And you can have faith in what you are making. Um I I there's this line that has always stuck with me from Poison Season which he says it's a miracle every time I open up my mouth. Um which I think to most people might read as like arrogance, you know? Um, but to me, I mean, I think that's, I think that's kind of what is going on here. It's just, it's okay. Like I am, this is a blessing that I am able to, to get this out. It is a miracle that this is happening. Um, because like it can be so hard. Yeah. And, and I think he's saying, and so instead of worrying about it, he's like, this is, this is enough. This is okay. And he's just letting it out. And it's, I mean, and of course, but like, obviously the joke is that like, this is the best fucking writing ever done by any person ever. Um, so, you know, but, you know, we get the humble brag, Dan. We, we recognize the humble brag, but we allow it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I tried to make that funny at the end, but I think if, it's just, oh, it's just so good. Alec, did you uh, want to say I, something? Could I read a, a totally random passage from Hamlet? Yes. Uh, and this may. is Hamlet speaking. What are what are they children? Who maintains them? How are they escorted? Will they pursue the quality no longer than they can sing? Will they say? Will they not stay? Say afterwards if they should grow themselves to common pl- players? As it is most like, if their means are no better, their writers do them wrong to make them exclaim against their own succession. Yeah, that's it. That's from the that's from yep. the play, right? Yep. The, totally, uh, totally the play random with, yeah, yeah. verse from from Hamlet. Well, I know I meant like the play within yes, a play. Part. Yeah, I of I have the, no idea yeah. how to read that. The... Shakespearean grammar is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean Yeah. I feel like Hamlet radiates the same um, energy as um as I agree. as uh Kaput. This album we've been talking about for almost an hour now. <laughs> hey, um I, I, I have a question. Um what does Kaput mean? It is... means, so I believe it's Yiddish, um, and it means to to destroy, or it means kind of nothing, like to to be made nothing, you know. So like you might say, oh, and and they're like, let's say, I'm a sports commentator. Oh, and with that score, the team who was winning their lead went kaput, you know, like it went gone, it went missing. Um, I mean, it's a pretty hard to define word. Uh, and I think that's, I mean, that's and also, I mean, that's, it's I perfect. Like, because... I feel like it's as much an exclamation than it is, uh, like, a word of any particular meaning. Yes. <laughs> like, obviously, it has connotations. I think, I think that the main it, phrase, Just... a phrase you'll hear with kaput the most is that it went kaput. Um and I, I mean, I, and and obviously that it's just a beautiful word as it is. 
Um, and it, it, with the context of the album, it's just a perfect title because it's so enigmatic and it is so, you know, it's 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 so evocative and descriptive. Yet it's describing nothing. I think at all. Behar was actually um, feeling a, a little bit emotionally bankrupt when he made this. Um, and I, I think really? it has ties to that. Well, yeah. If you if you listen to um to to uh shit, what's it called? It's a B side. It's um. Give me one second. Um. Anyway, there's this B side. It's a really long spoken word piece. It's like almost ten minutes. Oh, um, lazy. No, 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 no. Um. No. Um, I'm I'm almost there in my in my library. <gasps> it's not there. Mysterious. Oh wait, grief point. Okay, grief point. Uh, he he gives this really long spoken word piece about just being totally like hollowed out, <laughs> um, and mm. and not really being able to make art or feeling like he can't engage with it in like this kind of like difficult way. Like there oh, like there was a we removal. Lost him. For him, so which I feel like is makes a lot of okay. sense. <laughs> I think I think we lost you in the middle there, Alex. Oh, okay. So he he talks about basically feeling very detached from from his life and mm. his art, which to me makes a lot of sense for you know the the work itself and and the album title and just kind of like it feels like grappling with with that in in I many agree. ways. Yeah. And that's part of the magic trick is he makes it sound so yeah. effortless. <laughs> that's what that's what I was trying to get at when I said it's a miracle every time I open up my mouth that little and bit. And that's 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 uh, what he meant er, earlier yeah. when um when he said when when I quoted him saying that he he's barely there on that album. <laughs> yeah. Um I think it uh, he meant it almost spiritually more than yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, album. and of course to end with Bay it of Pigs, slaps. Like, who the fuck? I think my favorite song <gasps> on this album. Oh, uh, let me see. What Sorry, Maddie. What? Yeah, what? I was gonna, I was gonna read a, 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 another editor's note from the uh, <laughs> from the the, the, the blurb. Every mm-hmm. song on Kaput may be the greatest song of all time, a true testament to the frightening power of ye who despair. And Bay of Pigs simply exists. It is Amos' basket of fruit beware oh yeah there's the amos connection so i do get to read you guys amos eight, <laughs> one, two, three after all all right yeah, go ahead um so this is from amos's perspective god showed me god said this is god said the end has come for my people israel no more will there be cries of songs of joy in the temple they will all be replaced with cries of mourning there will be dead bodies everywhere they will be cast out in despair. So that's that's Amos's basket of fruit. Um, God showed Amos a basket of fruit. Amos said, "That's a basket of fruit." And God said, "I'm going to destroy everyone." Thanks, God. Thanks, God. <laughs> yeah. So that's 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 the. I mean, it is. Yeah, I think I. It's fucking. I mean, it's just fucking great. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm going to list off some songs on Kaput, and I yeah. want you to I I want to I want to get your guys' thoughts okay. on 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 these songs. I'm way more involved in this podcast than I thought. I, 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 yeah, I, I think really, you, I, I really knew you'd be involved. involved. I really, I really, <laughs> I really, I, 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 for some reason, entrusted you two, but also at the same time, there was a thought in the back of my head is like, no, I'm going to have to guide these two. Yes, yeah. you're baking for a very yeah. good moderator. Um, if my Spotify wants to load, because I do not have the, I can the list off. This. I've I've already got it right. open. But, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna list off. But this is the I I need to tell your guys' thoughts. Okay, oh. so uh, I want I want so suicide demo for Kara Walker, mm-hmm. greatest uh, song of all time. Yes, of course, yeah. the great. Uh, your your thoughts on this song and some some background on the song because I know it's a very uh, obviously the, the 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 name of the song is very intriguing. Um, so the bulk of the lyrics are a poem written by Kara Walker, um, who is an American poet. Um, I believe she's from New York. Um, 
she she's, she's also a, an artist like visual artist yes, she uh, is, that's, yes. that's how i um, knew her work i i didn't know she was a poet yeah, she's a person of color and she i believe i don't know how they got in touch but he she sent him that that like a bunch of note cards and he was just like it's a song now <laughs> um and it's just fucking beautiful but i think i think also what's, what's also so captivating about it is that it's also like very damn yeah it's very much his lyrical style, and so it's it's a, this fascinating line. Like, where does um? And there's there's the one line that always stuck with me, and I remember the first day of college. I, I remember think keep on this line kept coming back to me, which is four more years, four more years, four hundred more years of this shit. Fuck it. I look up, I see the North Star, and so on and so forth. Uh, which I just thought it's a beautiful line. Um, really, also it's got a in, intense uh, American historical baggage there too. The this yeah. is the heaviest yep. song in the album for me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's also got a. It flute does. Solo. That's true. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Yeah, All right, real good one. Song. One of my favorites. Bring out the gauntlet. Okay. Uh, we again. Um, I believe. Uh, what what is the song? I believe it's either the title track or it it is Chinatown, where he's like, you know, chasing some oh, that's girls. Good okay, yeah, that's the title okay. track. The title track. I, I know you spoke upon it already somewhat, but the uh, title track is a very movie. enigmatic yeah. song because of all, because it is the least lyrically. It's the least. It's the song with the least lyrics on the album. Um, it's it's a long song, and so you expect it to be like cramp jam packed but each verse is pretty short and he repeats it um and they're kind of infrequent he mostly lets the music go which was really when i discovered this um and i was listening to it and i realized that it i mean it's it's really yeah. beautiful i mean this is just a great song it just slams the song goes really also hard. the the lines um, the, the the really central lines wasting your days chasing some girls all right chasing some cane cocaine through the back rooms of the world all night that that hits really hard for me that's that's yeah. big heavy <laughs> um i think mean, I mean, that's obviously, like, yeah, like that's... i mean that that comes nowhere near my personal experience but <laughs> 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 uh, for some reason it's i find it deeply compelling yeah i think that's one of the central lines yeah. of the album if i were to um, yeah, this is just a great song. Okay, and and we we've been uh, we we've been we've been avoiding it somewhat, mm-hmm. but let's let's speak upon the outro. <laughs> Day of Pigs. Woo! detail. So eleven minutes, eighteen seconds. I've heard a rumor that I've this is not, I've never confirmed this. I've never gone out of my way to confirm it. Um, but a friend of mine, Lucas, um, you guys may remember him, the poet. Uh, he, um, he said that he f- remembered reading somewhere that song of a Amer- that in Kaput and song for America. He says, I wrote a song for America. They told me it was clever. Um, he says that, that Bay of Pigs is supposed to be the titular song for America. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I do know that Bay of Pigs came out in like 2009, um, but it, Bay of Pigs is just a monster. Like, it's just, oh, it, it's, because what, the first five minutes is just, like, ambient? It's not even the first five minutes. I mean, like, most of the song is ambient. And he starts to sing at some point, and it's just, I'm the most beautiful, his, like, just masterpiece of poetry. Um, I know that I've seen footage of him performing it. He has to get out a piece of paper. <laughs> To, to read the lyrics um, which is just the most it's just so typical just so funny um, but there's like all these inter- interconnected narratives um, I and you know sometimes it feels just I and mean, it's just about like loves of his life and just his life in general or one's the narrator's life I shouldn't say his life because um, it's not necessarily autobiographical Dan uh, this, um, this a, is a brief tangent Dan is the mm-hmm. artist I have seen live who has borne away, pounded down the most drinks on stage. He, I yes. swear, yep. he drank like like ten beers up there, even more so than Matt Berenger. Yeah, yeah, he 
drinks. Yeah, like Matt Berninger drinks live. through the performance, right. but but it'll be like he'll have a sip at the end of every song. <laughs> yeah, no, he's no Dan is constantly nursing yeah. a beer. The beer is always in his hand. One hand is on the mic, one hand is with yeah. on his beer, and he's like, and he's like, I believe uh, I believe he say? was drinking Stella Artois. <laughs> yes, yes, he drinks Stella. Yeah, he loves Stella. Um, yeah, he's a king. I've, yeah, fucking love him. Oh, he actually, you know what? He didn't drink very much when I saw him do his little acoustic solo That's thing. That's probably good, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. He was chilling. That was yeah. great. That was a great show. Um, he played Sky's Gray before we knew it, nice. what it was. Um, and the only line I remembered, of course, was uh, working on the new Oliver Twist. <laughs> Um, and so when I heard Sky's Grey, I was like, oh, it's this song! It's this song! I heard it! <laughs> um, Maddie. There is a thread. I, well, yes. Next, next. Yes. Uh, continue. Guide us. Well, I was, I, I was going to uh, uh, talk about a thread uh, from a uh, friend of the podcast, Tandem Felix. Uh, thread. Dan Behar drinking beer on stage. So these are all the various beers that... <laughs> <laughs> Dan Behar has drank on stage. Of course, Stella Artois, that is yeah. a very popular one. He he drank that during the NPR uh, performance that the new pornographers did um, a couple years back, which, of course, uh, Dan at this point has uh, a, a fun fact. Well, I think I think what we have I think not everybody knows, but most people know that he at one point was uh, a member of new pornographers. He still is. Um, I think is he, he contributes. Yeah, he just doesn't tour with them anymore. Um, I, I don't, he had, I don't he had, know. He had I mean, songs I on the new album. The past couple of albums, he did. But... No, he did. No, he had. He had a. Um, he had a few songs on the last album. Maybe not the last album, sure? the album before. Okay. It. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the last two, I don't think he's he's been on. I don't think he was definitely on the one from 2015. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, but oh. like the, the 2017 oh, oh, one, I didn't and know the that one that came out last year. They had they've had two come out in the oh, last. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he wasn't on 2017, and I did not know there was one in 2019. Oh no, he was. Yeah, no, he had he was one on. He wasn't on it, but he wrote a song with, with um, AC Newman. Okay, he I contributed. Okay, to good. It. Good. okay. That's I didn't good. realize that there were two new pornographer albums, despite following uh, Mr. Newman on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, to Borg, to Borg is another beer he has drank on stage. Uh, Goose Island IPA at the Pitchfork Music Festival in 2011, a very iconic performance where they're all dressed in white and a very interesting stage setup that feels like a, like like we're peeking into the studio, you know, which is one, it's one of the more interesting stage setups that I've seen where like where everybody is placed because obviously Dan has a very big band, but also the fact that it does look like a, a studio mm. and put it on a festival stage. Uh, Estrella Galicia. Mm. Heineken, mm-hmm. uh, a few. There's a couple of mystery ones. Uh, Modelo, a special <laughs> king. Like, more Stella, but also some Guinness. Yep, yep. Lone Star, a big case of Lone Star. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> he definitely ring. does strike me as like a as a European as a European beer drinker. Oh boy, we have a video. I have a video. Let me turn up the volume really quick to see what Dan says. Which makes it really strange to see what's happened, at least in North America, with film and how it's disappeared, you know, in the 21st century. It makes you feel really old. When you grew up, what was... He grabbed a beer, by the way, for those who... Oh, okay. Who I he grabbed a beer. I was like, I was trying to figure out what was, was, was beautiful and wise, but also what? <laughs> what but he was... Uh, Yes. Anyways, let let us let us continue. Uh, I mean, I think we really. I mean, there there's a lot we've said about. So I, I'm actually gonna throw some non kaput questions at you guys. Yes. Uh, so what is your favorite non kaput destroyer album? Gun to your head. Okay, gun is to your head Ooh, right now. Oh God. You got again. You have ten seconds until I pull the oh, trigger, shit. Jeremiah. I'm dead. You have ten seconds. All right, hold on. You gotta go with your gut. Oh, I gotta, you gotta go, go with, with your gut. gut. You can discuss it later, but this, uh, this is again. All right, uh, Rubies. Oh, I don't know. It might be Ken. Ken has really grown so much for me. I'm gonna say Rubies. I'm gonna stick with to my guns. I, I think rubies. the answer for me is City of Daughters, but I think overall I've listened to Ken more. 
Um, so I yeah, I'll say I'll say City of Daughters. City of Daughters is great. I I I, I that was a a lovely uh discovery that that Jeremiah sent my way, uh, by bullying me into purchasing the record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had never listened to. Uh, it's a great, but, record. but yeah, I'm, but really, yeah, the, the the journey of Destroyer has been very. I, I've gotten into Kaput over the years, uh, as my introduction was Poison Season, because uh, Jeremiah begged and pleaded that we discuss it on a podcast. Yes, uh, do a whole episode about it, and I I like the record. I think it's uh, obviously the album cover is fucking amazing. It's one of my favorite album covers of all time. It's a a, yeah. a haunting photograph, classic. Uh, not my favorite destroyer album though. I, oh, poison I, there, season or kaput. Poison season. Poison season. Yeah. A couple songs on poison season. I think poison season was not the best introduction to destroyer. That no, I, I don't think it was either. And Ken didn't. I mean, I need to probably give Ken another listen, but Ken did not grab me as Ken much. Ken is and... monumental. Like Ken is a Ken is a sleeper. Ken Ken is a I sleeper album. Awesome. Like it it oh. sneaks up on you, but I mean, I it's. Oh my God! It, what an album! It seems like it seems like a a, a proper continuation of of Kaput. The, yes. the sounds he's going with. But even I think he, but it's still, is... but he still experiments. He just it's 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 like a simpler Kaput in some ways, because um, I think he wisely recognized that you can't really follow Kaput tra- in a traditional way of making a sequel. So he, I mean, he's, it's the same palette, but. Yeah, Ken is yeah. just fucking awesome. Highly, like if you like Kaput and you didn't listen to Ken, you need to listen to Ken. Uh, or give it like, another listen. If or you give it another Ken, listen. Ken, Ken is a little less immediate. It takes a little bit more time, I think. Although, yeah, that I just kept yeah. listening to it when it came out, and then and then it's just like it's it is one of those albums you can just play over and over and over again. Um, but like, saw you at the hospital and light travels down the catwalk are just. Unquestionably, saw you at the hospital is his best song. I (laughs) know, at least for for me, I I think it's number one. But also, yeah, the saw you at the hospital hits hard for me for for different reasons, (laughs) for weird personal reasons, um, involving hospitals. Um, let's see, but but I I, but to to continue on Kaput, it was was Kaput that was uh, unlocking a skeleton key of sorts, yes, with Sam Behar being like, okay. I get yeah. this. I don't. Yeah. I'm not as into it as, as you guys are, obviously, because mm-hmm. I think this this album very clearly is a very formative record for you both. Yes. Um, but uh, I mean, still so the, the the magnificence of this album cannot be stated enough. It definitely is truly like a, a breakthrough for Dan in terms mm-hmm. of uh, letting go. Um, uh, because Jackson is not here, I, I must I must be the person who does this because every <laughs> podcast must have one more cosmic <laughs> record or one more cosmic reference. But I feel like that this album, in a way, is sort of very similar to to uh, Benji and being that sort of un- unlocking moment of like I don't have to make records this this way. I've been making records the last couple of years. I can, yeah. you know, I don't yeah, I, I don't have to be in a studio and and standing up and being very very theatrical and making myself stand out. It's just like no, I can be a bit more honest to myself and I can uh, make songs that feel a bit more that's, real. That's very me. apt. And yeah, I, yeah. Uh, so uh, Jackson, if you're listening, you're welcome, motherfucker. All right. <laughs> you're welcome that I've stepped Gun- in for you. But but nevertheless, uh, Kaput is 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 a ma- gun to your now. head. But okay, gun to your bad. head. Favorite Mark Kozilek album. Oh, um, gun to my head. Fuck it, Universal Themes. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uni- I'm gonna go Universal Themes. Over- I know Benji is clearly the better record, but Universal Themes to me is 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 like i think benji is a very is obviously a very personal and a very honest record but i think it's obviously a a filtered honesty it, it is it, it is uh honesty that's that's sort of long gestating and with benji out of his system i think mark was able to kind of really explore the the more stream of consciousness style which i think universal themes is the best uh distillation where it's he's not he's he's obviously unhinged but he's not as unhinged as he's going to get <laughs> on later records. You know, we're not quite at, okay, just make a podcast. Already, Mark. We're, not, we're not at that point yet. All right. We're, Gun we're to Alex's with... head. I've pulled the oh, trigger boy. on okay. Maddie. Maddie's fucking dead. Alex, tell me the plot of Lily, Rosemary, and the Jack of Hearts. <laughs> or else. 
Or else. Oh, God. Okay. Um... <laughs> Clock's ticking. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking dead. I'm dead. I can't, <laughs> I can't do that right now. I could pull up the lyrics. <laughs> uh, so I think, like... So Jack of Hearts shows up. He's a bank robber. Lily is smexy. They smex yeah. or something. Big Jim is mad. Rosemary kills Big Jim because Big Jim sucks. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Now I'm thinking Anyways. about idiot win. Um, so back back to our regularly pre regularly scheduled discussion, which was about the album Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. Um, I you know it's really. I don't want to be. We were talking about this earlier, Alex. Yeah. But uh, who ha- who was the poor soul who was sent to go check in on Bob <laughs> while he was writing "Idiot"? God, Wind? I don't know. Who who was never yeah, seen whoever again? Whoever it was, they were changed um, forever. He was seen as a bloody bloody pulp <laughs> outside of Bob Dylan's door with lots of bite yep. marks. Um, what happened? God, you know? we. It's not for us to know. Not for us to just know. like kaput. All right. Just like Kaput, Just like not Kaput. for us to know. Maddie, do you have any final questions for us about album Kaput by Destroyer? Um, well, I mean, let me, let me, let me see. So obviously, this this podcast has been long gestating. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been trying to get this off the ground. I'm very glad that that we are. Yeah, we are. We we are. We are at. The, it's going the, much the better end. than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I will say, um, sort of. Uh, in, in a more sort of in thoughts on, on this album uh and and the impact that you think it will have on you in in the future and sort of uh make make, make one last pitch you're in the elevator and uh mr mr warbucks is in, is in the elevator with you mm-hmm. and he is thinking about uh he, he says i'm going to give 300 million dollars to an artist to just make whatever the fuck they want but you got to they got to show to me why why mm-hmm. they deserve the 300 million dollars. Mm-hmm. What what is your elevator pitch uh, so, on to 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 a to a listener that uh either either has not listened to this record or has not given this album a fair shot. Well, so the instinct is to say it's the greatest album of all time. Um but I recognize that despite me saying that many albums are the greatest album of all time, it doesn't work and people don't listen to them. So I'm going to uh, reapproach my tactic here. So I'm going to let Alex yeah, take so, the lead. So first of all, I, I would say don't give that money to Dan Behar. Get, put that money towards, uh, you know, resurrecting Jean Renoir so he can make Grand Illusion Yes, too. yep. Um, but I, I would say that. that you should listen to the album Kaput because Poor in Love is my cat's favorite song. Um, it is very calming. We lost him, sir. Uh-oh. Am I, am I back? Maddie pulled the am trigger. Am I back? Yeah, you're okay. back. Okay. Yes. So you're, the, you're the back. reason you're, you're you should saying. listen to Kaput is because uh, the song Poor in Love from the album Kaput is my cat's favorite song. He finds it very calming. Mm. It instantly puts mm. him at ease. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's enough reason. Yeah, I think that's a good reason. Um, I think you should give. I think you should listen to Kaput because it is the one of the best songwriters of all time at the top of his game, as well as the most sumptuous music I've ever heard on record. Like you can just envelop yourself in it and you can drown in it you know just like you stare too long into kaput and you drown in its depths put stares back onto you uh, <laughs> while i'm staring at kaput this giant wave of molasses oh god stare too long into the molasses and it will stare back into you okay we wow. we got some molasses recently for uh cookies Mm-hmm. And um and Ooh. and I just I can't look at it right. <laughs> I'm just like I know what you've done. <laughs> Oof. What is what is moving on? Uh, what is what is next for Indie Heads uh, retrospect and the Indie Heads podcast at large? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you something, brother. Uh, we have after this podcast, we have uh, three more planned. We have an episode of. Frank about Frank Ocean's Blonde returning to that record. Uh, it's mm-hmm. been a couple of years since we last discussed it. 
Uh, that album sucks. Don't look at my list of history. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Just know that this uh, Frank, sucks. Uh, <laughs> Not my most listed to album in 2016. Record, I swear to is. God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Frank Ocean's Blonde that that is up on the mantle. I don't know the 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 actual schedule end up going with. I think it'll just it just depends on what what the mood everybody's in. Uh, but obviously, Kendrick Lamar's to Pimp a Butterfly that is on the mantle, and the finale the finale of I guess this uh, special season of Indie Heads Retrospect is Joanna Newsom. Psycho Wait, we do Psycho Pop. Oh shit! I yeah. forgot about Psycho. Pop. <laughs> I was like, I was like, did Psycho I miss Psycho Pop? Happen first. I'm sorry. We already we 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 we've already did an episode about uh we already did an episode Smash about them. oh uh, so that's why yeah yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, my my brain got it, got it mixed up but anyway Psycho Pump uh to Pimp a Butterfly Blonde and of course the finale uh mm-hmm. Joanna Newsom Divers <laughs> ooh, 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 Divers gonna make me act up <laughs> yeah Jer Jer and I will be back on both Psycho Pump and Divers yes uh, so uh, have that to look forward to and then for a regular Indie Heads podcast. Uh, I I mean we'll we'll who fucking knows this who fucking knows yeah music sucks now <laughs> yeah <laughs> music, music sucks now except for Fiona Apple although no 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 give me that what? gun I'm going to okay. Condé Nast building <laughs> <laughs> um. nobody is nope Jeremiah nobody is there right now oh, nobody is yeah. is there because yeah one. <laughs> Uh, okay. Once, uh, once anyway, hope you guys school. enjoyed uh, this um, special I'm, I'm uh, podcast, and uh, we we will be uh, we will be back. Thank uh, you for listening. To oh wait, this ramble. wait, if, wait if hang on. Quick show. plug. Uh, be yeah. be on be on the lookout for future episodes of the uh, Discog Breakdown. We will return. Just Jake and I wanted to finish up with school first because it is making every small task exhausting. Very understandable. Can I plug something too? Now that we have this opportunity, um, I highly recommend that everyone. Uh, uh, the the song "Idiot Wind" mm, by Bob. Yeah, Dylan. yeah, Thank you for your yeah. Time. It's very good mm-hmm. song. One of the best yeah. ever. Yeah. So I think conclusion, Kaput cast Kaput's the best album of all time, um, and I mean that very sincerely. Uh, I will always listen to this album until the day I die. <laughs> I'll probably be listening to it while I die. <laughs> It'll probably be the song that the album that plays as I am in my death throes, so on and so forth. Which song do you think you um, die on, though? Oh, I mean the whole album at okay, once. So all of it at once. Well, maybe maybe the end of Bay okay. of Pigs. If I'm like, if time is still functioning when I die, <laughs> the ending of Bay of Pigs. If time has stalled, the whole album at once. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh. But again, so thank you once again. Follow us on Twitter at Indie Heads Pod. Uh, subscribe to us at all your, your your whatever podcast platform. Of course, we got uh, YouTube, we got Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, probably some other obscure app that I do not know that our 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 R S S B goes to. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we will see you all uh, probably next week for the next episode of the pod. Uh, what that will be, who who knows? You'll you'll find out when it comes out. So. Hopefully you all enjoyed and uh, we will see you all later. Have a good day. Stay safe out there. Thanks for listening. We love you all. And uh, donate to our GoFundMe to help us resurrect yes. John Renoir. Yes, please. Thanks Grand for your Illusion time. 2 on the way. Mm-hmm. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. For me, Nancy in a state of crisis on a cloud.